today's topic, the importance of decentralized off-grid communications. This one's kind of out there, but it's important. The problems we have today with social media, corporate media, and corporate news is centralization. Corporate media works fine for breaking news like a fire or a plane crash. Beyond this, the gatekeepers will shut down any dissent or a narrative that goes against the approved narrative. This is when users get shadow banned or even worse, totally banned from the platform. This is the problem with centralization. It's not your platform and some bureaucrat decides whether or not you can share what you'd like to share. Ham radio operators have been using off-grid communications to share files for a very long time. This was especially true back in the packet radio days where we had packet BBS servers radio operators could log into over the air. Although that functionality was awesome, it's not exactly what I'm talking about now. What I am talking about now is over-the-air blogging. Now, I'm not talking about full-size web servers or things like that. I'm talking about micro-blogging and the ability to share posts directly on our stations. Before I go into that further, let's get a couple of things out of the way. It's critically important to understand we need to keep talking to one another, person to person, station to station, in real time. Now, I'm not talking about talking politics on the radio. I'm talking about passing along good information to friends, family, group members, information they haven't necessarily heard. Now, that's for real-time communications. For asynchronous communications, we need to take a little bit of a different approach. Now, when I say asynchronous communications, this simply means communications which are not done in real time. Now, there's a few very good examples of this, but by far, Winlink is the best example. Another incredible example is JS8 Call. Now, there's also VAR, AC, Ion 2G, FSQ, and so on. For now, JS8 Call is probably the best solution to make this demonstration. Now, JS8 Call and VAR AC both have features which allow an operator to query another station to get information back from them. Now, if you've already used JS8 Call, it's easy to imagine how we would use this query function to our advantage. With JS8 Call, you can query a station, specifically query a station and say, uh, for example, what's my signal report? Or do you have any messages for me? The station, as long as it's on, can actually reply by itself, answering the question from the station who sent the query. Now, at the moment, I'm sending a message query to a station where I know there's a message waiting for me. Now, if we use this message query to conceptualize the idea of over-the-air blogging, it doesn't have to be, for example, a message. It, it could be something like a tweet. So from this perspective, think about sending a query to a station who's hosting specific files. So let's make believe for a moment that I'm not asking for a message stored in that station, that I'm asking for the most recent posts. We could send a query to that station and say, do you have any new posts, for example? Just like the station is sending me the message that's stored on his station for me, that could be a list of new posts from that operator. We can think about it like an index for a blog website or an over-the-air off-grid library. Now keep in mind, we're still pretending this message is a post stored on Oscar Golf 8 Zulu. The post is about the Yezu FT818 being discontinued, but in actuality, the topic of that short post could be anything. From the radio blogger's perspective, posts are written and stored in a folder on his or her own station. We write a short text post, perhaps a little bit longer than a tweet. We add references and source material, whatever is needed to get the point across, and we share it with a title and date in that shared folder. When operators are curious whether or not you have any new posts on your station, they simply query it the same way we query messages in the JS8 call network. The hosting station will send you a reply with the with a listing of the latest posts stored on that station. Beyond this, you can go ahead and query that post's ID, 
to have it directly downloaded to your own station for reading. The hosting station never actually broadcasts that it has posts stored on its station. It's up to the individual operator to query if posts are there or not. This way we're not adding a bunch of unnecessary traffic to the GS8 call network while still allowing operators to host and share posts with the network. At least I'm hoping that's how it will work. Another functionality I'd like to see is the ability to select all call as we have in JS8 call so that we can ask all the stations simultaneously if anyone has any new posts. This means people who aren't interested in these posts aren't bothered by a constant stream of broadcasts announcing them. Now that was JS8 call. This is VAR AC. VAR AC also has functionality which is very similar to the functionality we're talking about with this microblogging concept. VAR AC allows you to compose vmail messages. These messages can be sent uh, in real time or they can be stored in your station for later reception when that receiving station queries your station. All of these vmails were sent to my station while I was actually away. The station was running, but the process of receiving or ingesting these vmails was automated with VAR AC. So you see, getting this microblogging concept up and running is not very far away at all. So now I'll compose a message for Hotel Bravo 9 Alpha Victor Kilo. Now, although this is still a message and the functionality doesn't exist for microblogging yet, you can still see how this composition form could be used to compile a microblog. You just have to have a little bit of imagination. So while I'm compiling this message, let's finalize this video. I'm not trying to bring politics into amateur radio, but I am trying to use amateur radio for critical communications. For me, it doesn't matter if it's a hurricane, an earthquake, some other type of disaster, or if it's an attack on our free speech. I believe in any of these examples, we can use amateur radio to get our messages through as we normally would with social media. The difference with amateur radio is we don't have the bandwidth like we do over a Wi-Fi network, or over Starlink, or some other rapid, fast internet connection. For microblogging and messaging over the air, we need to use our bandwidth efficiently. Short text messages with links, things like that, like tweets, where every station can actually host and post these microblogs over the air. Now, what we need to do is make such a big fuss about this functionality, of course, if we agree with the need for the functionality, and get developers to add this type of functionality to JS8 Call, to VAR AC, even to WinLink. I believe every station should be able to disseminate good quality information to their communities. We shouldn't have to be afraid or have to rely upon centralized communications as we have in social media to get our messages through. Now, I know there's going to be those operators who say, hey guys, hold on, this is not what amateur radio is all about. I would argue that this is exactly what amateur radio is all about. And moreover, I would say that it's up to us, amateur radio operators, to adapt to the needs of a changing world. This idea of micro blogging over the air with amateur radio is useful on so many levels for so many different things. What I need from you all is your support. Help encourage amateur radio developers, JS8 Call, VAR AC, and WinLink to implement this microblogging technology or concept in these applications. Now, if you don't see any point to what we're trying to do here, just ignore this video and keep on walking by. For the rest of you who might be intrigued by this concept, remember, when I introduced the concept of asynchronous communications, asynchronous data communications in the YouTube ham radio community, that playlist I shared was a hit. I think 11,000 of you have viewed that entire playlist by now. So if you're interested in that asynchronous data communications for emergency communications, this step isn't that much further away from where we are now. All we have to do 
is get the developers on board. Alright guys, look, because of the nature of this video, I'm going to skip putting the supporters' names up on the screen for this video. Instead, I'll say thank you to my YouTube members and Patreons and everyone else who is helping to support my work on this channel and the blog. For the rest of you, let me know what you think. Do you like this concept of over-the-air microblogging? Do you think it'll work? Do you have some ideas to add to it? Leave your comments in the comments below, and the only thing I ask is that you be polite. Alright guys, if you like what I'm doing, if you like the content I'm creating, please leave me a comment and or a thumbs up to let me know. And if you think I went above and beyond with this video, please use that super thanks button just under this video. And finally, if it's not too much to ask, please share this video someplace or somewhere where other operators might find it entertaining or useful. All right, guys, rock and roll. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for your support. And thanks for everything you do for this channel. Ciao.